It's the middle of July and things are starting to heat up on the main line in the Philly Burbs. Tonight, we're at Nectar Restaurant to add yet another milestone to the story of Pennsylvania wine. At this point, I've done several videos about the state of Pennsylvania and wines from the east coast of the United States. And that's for good reason. We're starting to make wines that are undeniably good. So can the wines from my home state of Pennsylvania compete on a larger scale? That's what we're here to find out tonight. We're going to be putting up some of our best against comparable wines from the state of California. I give you the judgment of Pennsylvania. Tonight's event was inspired by the infamous Judgment of Paris in 1976. In the original Judgment, underdog California went up against the French giants and claimed their place in history. In that spirit, Pennsylvania will go head-to-head -head with California. The biggest challenge is to separate the past from the present and also for people to be open-minded because there are some bad wines and yes. we're bad wines but the reality is but there are bad wines in California yes. and the challenge is people tend to prejudge because it's from Pennsylvania or from the Mid-Atlantic and so I think that I would love to blindfold people there's not a chance they could see labels or anything else and then really say do you like it or not like it that's yes. the big that's the really the most important part Wine's natural position in most occasions is as a food partner more so than as a standalone beverage. And Pennsylvania's style is a very food oriented style. It's not very high in alcohol. It's not so strong in flavor that it overwhelms delicate produce or fresh foods. It's very much a restaurateur style of wine in that you enjoy a glass and have another. Nectar is a huge proponent of local food and local wine boasting a list of over 25 wines from Pennsylvania alone. Chef Patrick Fury and sommelier Scott Zaccalillo organized this event as a way to celebrate the richness of our local produce. It kind of just went together. It was, it was very easy to, come, to have this experience for the guests when they come here. When people are coming in for this event, um, they're going to have you know, such a fun, cool experience. And you know, with Scott going out and really finding and searching and, and finding the best of the best of what Pennsylvania has to offer with wine. The, the grapes and the wine and the cheeses are all from the same community so that um, it makes it a really unique experience for the guests. The wines in the running tonight fall into two categories, Chardonnay and Red Bordeaux style wines. An open call was put out for wineries to submit their best. Out of 150 requests, about 110 responded. They then had to be further narrowed down by a blind tasting panel. Tonight's contenders are six whites and six reds. The panel of judges is made up of some very well-known and respected people in the local wine and food industry. These guys know their stuff. Pennsylvania um, is the fifth largest producer of grapes and the uh, sixth or seventh largest producer of wine in the United States. We think this is a region that needs a lot of a lot of time and energy and over the last 10 years we're finding a, an incredible increase in the amount of quality that wine, of wine that's being produced. Tonight's event is a taste around that features Pennsylvania winemakers, cheesemakers, and even a chocolatier, all showcasing their local fare. Events like this and this is uh, at Nectar is a great way of just bringing local artisans together, the winemakers, cheesemakers and chocolate makers and it's, uh, it's a lot of fun for everybody. You can't really tell the quality of the wine until you taste it against something that's a benchmark for, for the industry and in this case it's California. California did the same thing back in the 70s and 80s. You had to convince people that what they were trying really was as good as the things they've already had. Where we're at in Pennsylvania it's the best of uh, everything. We have uh, great wines, great cheese, great fruit and vegetables. Uh, pretty much everything that you could possibly think of is within an hour of this area. And this is an amazing event, actually. Uh, I hope they continue to do this year in, year out. Patrick Fury here at Nectar is a big proponent of local food and a friend of our farm. And it's nice to pair with the winemakers who share these values. 
The wine keeps flowing and the results are being tallied. We're all excited to hear what the final decision is. Pennsylvania winemakers, winemakers are not trying to emulate California, they're not trying to emulate France or Germany or New York, they're trying to create an identity of their own. You don't need to go across the country or across the ocean to find good wine. You can actually visit the winery, you can see the grapes in your own backyard, and they're good. Out of eight possible awards, Pennsylvania took four in total. Penn's Woods Winery took two of those awards, including a gold medal for their Chardonnay Reserve, and an honorable mention for their Cabernet Sauvignon. An even split between Pennsylvania and California is a pretty good start, but tonight's event accomplished something even more. The goal of the night was to open people's minds to trying something new, um, to not get stuck into the same rut of, I only like California wines, I only like Oregon wines, I only like French wines, and I think we did that. I think we accomplished that and opened some, some opinions up to trying local wines, trying to, and supporting local businesses. A few wineries winning an award tonight, a few wineries getting recognition, helps the rest of them because people are going to open their eyes to, you know, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania wine's pretty good. I think we're uh, ready to play ball with the big boys. Well, that was a great success both for Nectar and for Pennsylvania wines in general tonight. I think that the state of Pennsylvania is starting to show the rest of the country and maybe eventually the world that they're making wines that are noteworthy and worth checking out. Thanks for joining me here on Wine Living, as always, and check back later for more wine adventures.